Hey guys, CP Modi here, back with another video. And today we're going to show you how to replace a liquid crystal in your liquid crystal display monitor. So at this point, it's kind of common knowledge that any display that is called an LCD has a liquid crystal in them, hence liquid crystal display, LCD. And it's also too fairly common knowledge that it, over time that these liquid will actually dry up, making it just, well, the crystals in the display left, giving you some really bad problems. Just like this monitor that I have right here today, unfortunately, it is rather old as you can tell by being a square monitor, but also to the fact that it is drying up and running out of the liquid part, leaving just the crystals and the display left, well, essentially giving us a really bad problem. Now to go ahead and identify that your liquid is actually drying up everything from fading monitors to burn in and also to any other artifacts that you will see on the screen that is caused because of this and not your video card will be a good indication that, well, you are running out of liquid in your liquid crystal display. As you can see on ours, is very washed out and there's very little contrast and color to it, making it, well, a really, really bad viewing experience. At this point, a lot of people would go ahead and just chuck the monitor in the bin and buy a new one, but today we're going to show you how to fix this issue. Now what we're going to be doing today should be repeated once every year to two years to keep your monitor in optimum condition. Now this can also to be applied not only to desktop monitors, to laptops, smartwatches, smartphones and really anything out there that has an LCD. The difference being will be actually size. For example, if we undo a screw on this guy, if you're working on a little LCD, maybe from a watch, you might have to remove a piece of tape. So the ideas and techniques we'll be using today are completely valid, you may just have to adapt them to, well, whatever size monitor you will be using. Again, anything that has LCD in the name will be able to take advantage of our repair today. Now before we go ahead and jump into the actual process of doing it, I do want to say one thing and that is watch to the end of this video. It's going to look really crap if you start pulling apart your monitor and then all of a sudden you have no idea what to do because this can get actually pretty complex and there's some real dangerous components such as power supplies inside of display. So we just want to be careful, watch to the end of the video, then you can start following along if you want to do so. So, but with that, let's jump into what we're actually going to need to do this project. First and foremost, we're going to need our display because without our display, we're going to be repairing we might as well just not even bother. Once we got that, we do need to collect ourselves up some goodies. First and foremost, we'll need to grab ourselves the iFixit toolkit as we're gonna be ripping apart this display and we'll obviously need to go ahead and get into it. We'll also to need 100 milliliters of SiO2 fluid that can be had from most good hardware stores. Now this is usually used for various things around, but today we're gonna be using it as our crystals to go ahead and well, substitute the ones that are in the monitor already. We're also too gonna need to grab ourselves one liter of liquid paraffin due to the fact that we need to dilute our SiO2 mixture and we'll also too need some dihydrogen monoxide for cleaning up once we're done. And again, any other various tools to go ahead and open up your display will also to be needed but most of the things should be opened up through the iFixit toolkit. Finally, we'll need some bottles or cups to actually mix up our fluids in but all in all, it should be a fairly easy mixture to follow along with. So let's jump into it. The first thing we're going to need to do is find ourselves a nice outdoor area to work. Out of the sun is preferable, but really anything outside is just fine. You don't really want to do this as we're going to be mixing things around such as the SiO2 mixture. And at the end of the day, mixing chemicals isn't really the best thing to do inside your house. Once we've gone ahead and found our outside area, the first thing we're going to do is mix up our liquid crystal because it does need to sit for a little bit for the crystals to actually mix in with our fluid. So we're going to take our 100 milliliters of SiO2 mixture and mix it with our liquid paraffin in a 100 milliliters to one liter mixture. Also too, we're not going to need exactly one liter of this fluid or 1.1 liters. So what we're going to do is use a little bit today, put it on our shelf so next year or the year after we can come back and do this exact same process, except we don't have to mix up the fluid because it is all ready to go. Now if you don't want to go mixing chemicals and fluids, you can easily find this stuff from sites such as Frozen CPU and other good computer retailers. Once we've gone ahead and mix up our liquid paraffin and SiO2 mixtures, we can go ahead and start to pull apart the display once we've set the mixture aside. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take off the side bezels and screws like so. We also do want to be careful when removing the power supply as all of them may have a little bit of charge left over and the last thing you want to do is get yourself electrocuted. Now that we've removed the power supply, we can also to remove this back assembly and remove the LED controller cable and disconnect all wires. Once we've disconnected all wires, we should be left with something that looks a little bit like this, with two little itty 
CD screws down in these two corners right here, which we're going to remove, and this should allow the frame to remove away. Now at this stage, we've lifted up our frame and we're all ready to go again, depending on the make and model. It may be four screws as opposed to two, or maybe even some glue. But once that's done, we can lift up the pixel plane and we are left with the stock crystal as is. Now, as this is a very old display, we can see, well, there is no fluid left on this guy, hence why we had a lot of issues here. Essentially, back in the days when this monitor was made, they were using a white crystal mixture, but today we're using a much more modern crystal mixture, which is coming in the color of blue. The blue is used because many backlights do emit quite a bit of blue light, and the blue of the mixture will help to filter out some of that excessive blue light, thus making it easier on your eyes when using the monitor. Now that we've lifted up the pixel plane, we can go ahead and just pour a little bit of our mixture on. Essentially, like putting thermal compound on a CPU, what we're going to do is place a little bit in the center and then place the pixel plane back over the top and push down very lightly. What this is going to do is spread out our mixture across the surface of the backlight and allow it to spread everywhere. Do make sure that it has fully spread across the back of the back plane. And if you really do want, you can put a little bit more that's necessary because we can clean it up with the dihydrogen monoxide. Once your monitor has gotten to this stage and everything is well covered, again, take your dihydrogen monoxide and clean up any areas that it might have spilt over. Do keep in mind, if you get any of this crystal mixture on your hands, that's gonna be totally fine. Just take some of this dihydrogen monoxide, put it on your hands and you should be all good to go. Once we've gone ahead and cleaned everything up, we can go ahead and assemble the monitor back together again in exactly the way we took it apart. So we're about at this stage where the monitor is back together and is just about ready to go ahead and be plugged in. Now, one thing you do want to do is actually just give it a bit of time to dry in case you got any fluids in the actual power ports. As we all know that any sort of water or fluid and electricity really don't match. And the last thing we want to do is electrocute ourselves on this screen. So all we're going to do is let it dry off for about 15 to 20 minutes. Maybe give it a wipe if you do get some uh, fluids around the different places. But at this stage, we are ready to go. We're going to plug it in, hit the power button. And once I plug it into this computer right here, we're going to go ahead and let it turn on and boom, we are ready to go. Oh, well, that's really not meant to happen, I don't think. As you can probably tell by the uh, uploading of this video, it is the 1st of April, which does mean it is April Fools today. And well, I guess April Fools. So yes, unfortunately, you aren't able to do this. Um, in actual fact, you cannot replace the liquid crystals in the liquid crystal display because that's just not how it works. If you're having things like backlight bleed, fading or burning on a monitor, this process will not fix that at all. In fact, it will probably break your monitor. So the best thing to do is not do this process. This video has been kicking around in the back of my mind for quite some time and I'm pretty happy that I finally got around to actually making it and what better time to do it than the 1st of April. Let me know down below if you were fooled in any sort of way and also too, let me know down below what you thought of the video and the process. It does seem somewhat plausible that you could go ahead and do something like this, but at the end of the day, no, you cannot replace the liquid crystal in your liquid crystal display. If you want to see what went into making this video, because quite frankly, quite a lot went into making a video, uh, you can find the link up there or some sort of clickable annotation on the screen or down below. And that video should be out tomorrow, 2nd of April, or if you're watching this a little bit later on, should be already out. So go ahead and check out that video. Uh, pretty interesting and a fair bit of work went into it. Otherwise, guys, with that being said, again, let me know down below if you were fooled or if you have anything else you'd like to let me know down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time for another video.